Well, hello again, everyone. Um, I'm starting to clean up the transmission, so I thought I'd kind of show you what I'm starting with. I've already drained all the gook out of the inside there. So, now it's time to clean it all up. Make it look new. Okay, to start off, um, Normally the U-join is right here. Uh, you have one bolt holding that U-join on. All I did is take out that bolt and then the U-join slipped out. There is a thicker washer on there though. Got to make sure you get that too. Then next, I'm going to go ahead, there's safety wire around here, so I'm going to clip that wire, pull out the bolts, and then that will remove this whole uh, the mount part. Now that rear mount should just pull right off of here. Yep. I have to remember to put these bolts in that way before I put this back on. Now there's a cotter pin down here that I have to pull out. I'll remove that shaft and that'll allow me to, um, that'll allow me to slide out the other shafts. I remove the cotter pin and pulled out the shaft. Next, I got to remove this pullback spring from the throwout bearing. Well, that was easy. Not very much springiness to it. I'm gonna pull the throwout bearing off. Well, you're supposed to use a brass punch, but I don't have one on hand. So I'll just be really careful so I can remove this pin here. All right, now you can see the two pins right here that come out. The reverse, reverse gear here. Pull that out. There we go. All right, back up to the front here. Need to remove the four bolts. Okay, so to get this out, what I was able to do is to um, take the shaft and push it all the way through the back, and then I was able to pull this piece off the front. Then I'm able to slide it back forward and out from the back. to remove the reverse gears. Gear, reverse gear. Okay. And then the rest of the gears. Yuck. Nice sludge down there, but it's out. The next step is to remove the uh, rivet that holds the uh, fork to the shaft. So I'm just, I'm going to have to get a replacement. I'll just cut that end off and then drive it out from the other side. no easy task removing that pin. I ended up having to drill it, heating it, and then tapping it out. It was pretty tough. Alright. Alright, now I think it's ready for a good cleaning and inspection. This 
is the early synchronizer. It's got earlier synchronizer. It's got six springs and balls in there. There's a groove in the synchronizer ring that usually keeps the synchronizer in place and then when you change gears it kind of pops out, pops into that little groove right there. The spring tension keeps the balls in that groove. So I'm going to try to put this back together and put a little grease on each little spring, put it in there. Hopefully that'll <clears throat> keep the springs in place so that they won't go flying all over the shop on me. grease on all the balls too, that might help. I uh, bought the Van Pelt book and that really does have a lot of good information in it. <clears throat> I also have the Vern Tardell book, but I think the uh, Van, Pelt, Van Pelt book uh, helped me a lot more. If you have the How to Build a Hot Rod book already. Um, well, I guess the Vern Tardell book has a little bit more information than he did in the How to Build a Hot Rod. I would definitely advise on getting the Van Pelt. He goes into the, I mean, it's transmission, you know, specific, and he goes into the part numbers and the different model years and the different parts of the different model years and uh, explains it really good. He also has a lot of inspection limitations on there, which is what I was looking for. You know, you want to put a transmission back together, you want to at least know that it's in specs. Oh my god. Oh, thanks. <laughs> If I lose one of these ball bearings, it's going to be pain in the butt to get more. Okay, all six. Now, see this is a hint in the Van Pelt book that uh, to get the synchronizer ring on, put a hose clamp on there to keep these balls all in there. Let me start them. I'll slide this underneath there so the hose clamp has a room to slide off. <coughs> Got it. There we go. Snapped into place. on, it seems like there's only one good spot where it actually slides on good. It says in the Van Pelt book that Ford actually, uh, I guess like hand adjusted each one of these, marked it somewhere. There it goes. Another sub assembly would be uh, the gear cluster. What you have in here is you have a long ball bearing, a short ball bearing, and a spacer tube.
I'm gonna make sure everything's really clean. Up. I cleaned all this stuff in the parts washer a couple of times, but you know, just handling it gets grit stuff on it. So, so the long bearing, the spacer, the short bearing, and that's that sub assembly. Uh, the output shaft, main, um, basically you get, you have the shaft, then you have this oil washer, it's got a cup on it, you want to make sure the cup is towards the gear, then you um, put the bearing on, I used a piece of pipe to press that bearing on, with the snap ring towards the front, towards the shaft here. Um, and then there's another snap ring that goes on here and you have to get it all pressed together, touching each other in order for that snap ring to fit in the grooves. Once you got that, that's that sub-assembly. Um, you have your reverse gear. Shaft for that. Uh, the other short bearing goes on there. This same thing. You have your uh, bearing pressed on there. You got your oil washer here. Um, I think this is, I don't remember what they call it, but anyway, it slides back and forth, gives you neutral and stuff. And this second gear. Uh, and then there's a, there's a spacer ring here also that you have to put on. Oh, I know what I was gonna show you. Okay, so if you look on these, when I first tore this apart, I thought, oh man, those gears are all messed up, you know, there's teeth chipped out, but that's the way uh, Ford designed it, and the reason why is, I mean, I don't know why the other ones, but this one anyway, you have to align the hole in second gear uh, with that notch, and then there'll be a little spring in there, You'll find it and you'll feel it. And if you uh, press that spring down, you'll be able to push. Push this little keeper out. Okay, that was kind of a pain. I took a little piece of wire and pushed that out. So this slides out, and then that allows you to turn a little keeper washer type thing in here. It's got teeth on it. So if you spin it to the opening like that, then it will come off. You can slide your second gear off. And right there is that little spring push button that locks the key in. Alright, so to put it back together, second gear here, slide that on. You have the washer. Slide that on, and then spin it to your holes set. So there's little grooves on this back washer you got to line up. Line up the hole in second gear. This hole is not in center, so you have to line it up. Put the pin in where the hole is towards the back side there, and also it's rounded here. You want to round it out. 
So put it in there, press down on it, on that little pin, work your way out. There we go, it should slide in, and then it clicks in. It's flush with the edge here, so that can't go anywhere. And then it's locked in. Slide your spacer ring on. That spaces that ball bearing correctly. Now that's the first part we're going to put in. There's a thrust washer uh, on each end of it. This one has four little dots and they line up with the four grooves in the gear there, like that. And then this one has a little raised clip on it and on the transmission case there's a little spot where that raised clip goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little dab of grease on the back side of this so that it'll stay where I want it then I'll put this cluster gear down inside the case. Inside the case here see that little lip right there it's going to go against that surface and the grease will hold it. Then I'll take the cluster gear with the bearing sleeve and bearing and the thrust washer. Like that. Slide it in. And I'm going to let it sit all the way on the bottom I'm just letting it sit on the bottom of the case right now. That way it'll be clear for me to put the next set of gears in. All right, the next set is uh, the reverse gear. I'll put that in there. The little shoulder here go goes towards the back. And then I'm just going to put the pin in with the hole towards the back also. Okay, next I'm going to take the uh, main shaft, I'm going to slide it in, and then I'm going to slide it past the bearing surface and let it hang out like that. Then that will allow me to get my synchronizer on there. Okay. Found the sweet spot there. So now I can go ahead and slide this whole assembly forward. And if you see on the bearing, there's a race there for the, uh, or a groove for the snap ring. Just have it set right to that area. Next, I'm going to take my bearing, slide it on there, then I put, take my output shaft while holding the back, and slide it on all the way up to the snap ring. I'm going to take a little bolt with a washer, put it up front here, that will keep this from falling out uh, in my next step. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is take the uh, shaft here with a hole towards the back. The cluster gear is sitting at the bottom of the case here, so I got to put my finger in there and uh, be able to move it. Slide it up, try to line up the holes. Ok, 
Okay, now it gets it all the way down that far. Now this pin will go through like that. So you want to try to keep the holes lined up close to that as you can. Then I'm going to reach underneath and with my fingers line up uh, the washer that we put grease on so the pin or the shaft can come all the way through. Oh, that was easy. It's the easiest one I've done yet. Okay, now with everything back together, I can go ahead and put this snap ring on, the back bearing. Make sure it spins freely. All right, I'm gonna seal up these two shafts here, so I'm gonna pull this pin out. Okay, and I have uh, the front of the pin sealed also. Uh, working on the front seal up here, I have um, gasket sealer RTV on this piece, and then I put my gasket on, and then I put RTV on there. There's a little notch here in here that's supposed to line up with this oil hole, so you gotta make sure you get that in there right. Other than that, it's pretty much straightforward. Slide it on. I replaced the seal in here, lubed the seal up with grease so it slides on the shaft nice and doesn't tear up the seal. Um, and then just tighten the bolts. Okay, turn the, got the front done. Turn the transmission around. Pretty much the same thing in the back. Uh, I'll put sealing around here, put the gasket on, seal around here, put the rear mount on, bearing retainer on. Uh, between each time, I, you know, I've been spinning Make sure nothing's binding up or anything. So, as far as the shifter housing and everything, um, I inspected it and I didn't really see a lot of wear on it, so I didn't feel there was a need to tear all this apart and just to, you know, tear it apart. <laughs> I did clean it really well and everything, so I took uh, the bearings and the springs. When you shift, um, it's got a little notch in here that uh, basically these balls will click in and out so you got a positive shift. You can feel that, you know, click, click. So all I'm going to do is throw a little grease on the balls and a little grease on the springs, put those back in, put it back, to, put it back together. Got her all painted up in the Eastwood Extreme Chassis Black Gloss Paint. Also did my shifter and the clutch arm also. Alright, well there it is. All put back together, painted, lubed, all checked out. Shift's pretty nice. Uh, the only thing I had to replace was the main shaft. The old one was corroded. I replaced one bearing. Other than that, everything checked out really good. So it wasn't too bad. Got the original wooden ball on there that I that it had when I bought the car. Try to keep that. So that project is done and waiting to go into the car. Um, as you can tell through the video, you know, I'm not a professional mechanic, guys. I'm just, you know, a guy working in his garage trying to learn this stuff, putting this car together for the first time. So bear with me. 
You know, I just try to show you stuff that uh, might help you during your rebuild. Uh, I know when I try to do something, I kind of research it, and yes, I'll watch YouTube videos and that kind of stuff to see what information I can find on there. So I'm hoping that a few of you guys find this information useful. So, anyway, thanks for watching.